Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page seven of Blooming. And we're gonna do a couple of different flaps. And it's gonna be kind of like an accordion, but it's gonna gradually get smaller as it goes towards the center. So we're gonna start, I forgot my tape. We're gonna start with a seven and a half by, by eight, seven and a half by eight. Fishing around for the tape. <clears throat> And this is page seven. I want it to open away from the spine. Mm -mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. that. This is going to go on the right hand side. Hopefully you guys were successful with page six. Um, I had a little bit of, I mean, I've done it a few times, so I'm sure if it's your first time, you know, don't give up. And I, the first time I did it, I mocked it up on cheap paper. Looks like I've got something here. Here's my magic eraser. I think it was my planning phase. I can see it now. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, these are going to get smaller and smaller, an inch smaller, and so you'll have this, what looks like a pyramid in the end. So that was seven and a half by eight. This is going to be six and a half by eight, and you're going to install it on the open end. So you're going to lay it right there. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I can't. I just can't <laughs> with the allergies. Okay, now I'm not going to lay this down right now because I do want to put a bow on here and it's going to go under this hinge. And I like that location because when you're pulling on the ribbon, sometimes you can damage your um, designer paper. Now this one, so this was seven and a half, six and a half, squirt half inch. Five and a half, and the last one's four and a half. <clears throat> okay, so here's what the plan is. And I don't know if it's going to stay closed, so it may include ribbon and a magnet. And we shall see. I'm going to go ahead and put the smallest on top. <clears throat> I'm going to go right on this, what's going to be the open edge, and put this down. <clears throat> And you'll see why I'm doing it in this bizarre order, and it's to accommodate um, the ribbon. <clears throat> there is no direction yet, so just make sure you're on the cut edge and not the score edge. Uh, i got to think about this. Am I doing that right? And this is going to go this way. Yes. Okay. I had to think that through. I want to make sure I wasn't covering up the spot I was going to put. It didn't quite lay down flat, uh, straight. So I'm going to straighten that out real quick. And there we go. Okay. <clears throat> now this hinge is going to go here. So you can see we're just going back and forth, back and forth. And this is the one that's already installed on the pocket page. Now my plan is to put ribbon under here and under here. So let me separate these so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's the smallest one. And I want to put a piece of ribbon under here before I adhere it to this and a piece of ribbon under here before I add it here. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's do that. <clears throat> <clears throat> So my ribbon needs to go around. No, it doesn't. It just needs to come halfway. Okay, that should be perfect. So the whole idea here is to locate the ribbon so that it's not directly under a designer paper. So it won't tug on it when you go to tie it or untie it. <clears throat> so, mark. 
the midpoint, which is four, on this, and the midpoint on this one. And that's where I want to put my ribbon. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take off a little bit of the tape. Well, I'll go ahead and take off all the tape. So I'm going to tape it or catch it right here. <clears throat> Why do I bother? I don't know. And when I say that, I mean, why do I bother trying to take it off with my bare hand? So there's my mark. Okay, so, oops, that's installed. Now I can place this one on the open edge. Like so. And then we're going to place the second ribbon under this edge, <clears throat> right at four. <clears throat> and then there's the top flap. <clears throat> now that I've put this together for you guys, I think I probably could have done that a little more in a little more organized way. But I'll go over it again. So that's not the right pair of scissors. One of my scissors just tears everything up. Okay. Now this taped edge is going to go right on this open edge. So you can see we're just going back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> Okay, so now the ends of our ribbon are hidden and actually protected by the hinge itself. So when you pull, you're not pulling on designer paper. Let me go ahead and burnish those into place. <clears throat> and so now you can see the whole feature. The bottom is the the bottom is the 8x8 pocket page. On top of that is a 7.5 by 8. On top of that is 6.5 by 8, 5.5 by 8, and 4.5 by 8. Now, the two ribbons are going to get adhered to the hinge of the 5.5 and the hinge of the six and a half. I'm gonna put that in the notes um, so that you can sort of follow along. So now my plan is to tie these, it's gonna hold these three layers. I'll trim my ribbons after I get my paper in. <clears throat> so it's gonna hold these three layers and then that leaves the lowest layer loose, but because there's so much weight, it may stay closed, so I'm, I'm messing around with the idea of whether or not I actually need a uh, magnet here or here. Um, yeah, so I'm going to think about that a little bit. But I know for sure I won't be putting a magnet on the top. So let's go ahead and get started with the decorating. And the top piece is from, I think, it's from the 12 by 12. Um, collection pack and it's going to go right here. Isn't that pretty? And I, it's a slice of one of the pages and I just thought it was so pretty. It's prettier than the cards I have so I'm going to use this as the topper. <clears throat> and then I'm going to have to break after we put in the top layers because I don't have the inside planned yet and part of that is because I'm not sure what I'm doing with magnets. Not that that really matters. It just means I have to stop and think about it. It wouldn't change the pattern. But this is going to allow for a lot of pictures. <clears throat> because this is four inches wide, so you could do three and a half, three and a half. And this is five inches wide, four by six. 
You can do a five by seven. And then you can do two four by sixes here. So lots of room. Okay, so the next thing I plan is this pattern, which I really like. And it is going to go here. So this is the six and a half inch panel. And then I want to bring that pattern back in over here. So I didn't have enough full sheets, but I do have, um, this is from the 12 by 12 patterns pack. I do have enough to do some color blocking, but I'm going to start by laying this down. So if I have a magnet, yeah, okay. I won't put a magnet behind this one for sure. The magnets are going to go here and possibly here. But right now I just want to get some more weight in the book to see how the, um, the flaps interact and how they behave. So by adding the designer paper right now, I'm adding that weight to the book so we can get a better feel for the one this way with the dark side out, um, how it's going to behave and whether or not we need that extra magnet. I think it's going to lay flat, but we shall see. I probably should have turned that down a little bit. Okay, so you can see it's starting to come together. Now this is going to go here, and I think I have another piece of that pattern that I'm going to color block side by side, but it looks like I filed it, so let me try. <clears throat> what did I do with it? I don't like that. It's not the flip side. <clears throat> there it is. Uh, no, that's the 8x8. So it can't, this is from the collection pack because this is the 8x8. <clears throat> that's so strange. I know I had it. I had pieced it together a couple of times while you guys weren't watching. <clears throat> Well, shoot, that's the plan is to put it over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay, lay this one in so you can get a feel for it. Then I have another strip that's gonna go right side by side because I can color block, well, I gotta think about that. I'm either gonna play, place it side by side or I'm gonna put it over here and then we'll put something else in the center, but this is definitely going on the outside. This happens to be a scrap that I had and it is, two and one eighth inch wide, two and one eighth inch wide. You don't have to do it that way. If I had a full piece, I would use it, but I don't because we're on page seven. <laughs> and uh, you got to get a little bit creative as you go through the book because you're using up so much, especially if you build an order like I have for this project. Um, you have to, your choices are limited. <clears throat> so again, I have another strip. I don't know where I put it. And it's going to go either here or here, um, depending on what else I do here. But then you can start to really see this is coming together. Okay, so I'm going to tie these down. <clears throat> now remember, we stopped to come back and fill that and fill this. Do I want to fill this? Yes, I can go ahead and put this paper down because it's not going to interfere in my decision about a magnet. So I need a piece of paper to go here, and I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. So at this point, since I don't have that panel picked out, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to go find the other piece of that. And two, I'm going to start planning the designer paper for the inside and make a final decision on magnets, yes or no, and where. So when we get back together, I'll, we'll be able to finish this page in its entirety. So I'm going to take a break for now and then do some testing with how this behaves when you ha you know, when it's sitting in a book, is it going to just want to flop open? And it shouldn't because here's the spine side. So then the other thing is if this is the spine side, when you come to this page, is it just going to want to flop on you that way? So my, I'm leaning toward a magnet here and nothing here um, because here's your spine. So it's going to be attached to the book Gravity is going to pull it toward the spine. This is the side we have to worry about flopping open. So that's my thought process right now. Let me go find the rest of the paper. I'll make that final decision, and then we'll build this page.
back soon. Okay, everyone, I'm back. And I think I've got it all figured out, but we will make adjustments as we go. I kind of clipped everything in place because it's a lot of paper and it's really easy to get kind of confused. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open it up and put the base down and then back up, back up to the front. So while I was away, I made a decision to place a magnet on the six and a half. This is the six and a half inch panel and its uh, partner magnet is over on the seven and a half inch. So when it's in the book, um, gravity can't pull it forward and we've got a bow holding this in place. Not really worried about this side. I'm not gonna put a magnet on the six and a half I'm sorry, seven and a half to the eight by eight pocket page. You can if you want to, but I'm not going to. I don't think we need to, um, so I'm gonna save that magnet. So based on all that, we can go ahead and lay these two down because we don't have to deal with magnets here. But if you do want a magnet, uh, my recommendation is that you close the seven and a half, put a reference line, put your magnet down. Um, it's less important on these two pages because I'm not color blocking, so I don't have to worry about a split of white showing up right over top of my magnet. Um, if you're following along with the same patterns, you won't have to deal with that here either. Um, but it's just a good, uh, good way to give you an indication of roughly where to place your magnet. And I'll go over that on the one that I actually put in. It's already there, but I'll show you uh, the technique I used to place it. Just in case you're new, you're um, nothing new for the guys, you guys that have been around forever. Okay, here we go. And this page is turning out, I like it better than what I saw on my head. <laughs> that doesn't always happen. Um, and it, it is pretty straightforward because it's just each panel gets an inch smaller. So it goes seven and a half, six and a half, five and a half, four and a half. And then hinge, 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 hinge. Back and forth like that. Okay, now everything is sort of bunk, bulked up. I wanna make sure I get it relatively flat before I make a decision on whether or not I need to trim this. And I do, just a tiny bit. <clears throat> You guys notice how fast this goes together when you're not inking? Um, I know I don't ink online, you don't see me do it, but boy, it really cuts down quite a bit of time. And it does, I don't think it needs it um, when you have a white core. It's my preference. I think, it, and it's also hard to keep the white clean if you're doing anything with ink. You know, you, you forget, you try to wipe your hands in between applications. Next thing you know, it just looks like dirt on the white. So you, it either has to look very deliberate or be very clean. So, okay, so there is the eight, and a, eight by eight pocket page. And then this is our six and, sorry, I keep saying that, seven and a half. So um, once you fold at a half inch, it's seven inches, so it comes out, you know, one inch shy of the eight inch pocket. Okay, so then we'll close that. Again, I did not place a magnet. Now we are on, this is the six and a half inch. So that was seven and a half, this is six and a half, and you can see it falls short of the seven and a half. And that's how you get these, this sort of graduated look. Now this, I guess I already put it down. Yeah, we did. We did that in the first video. So that's down. And those go underneath. You don't, you don't care about that. So this is from the 8x8 collection pack. This is from the 12x12. 12 12, so I cut the butterflies off and I may fussy cut those and use them as embellishments later. But this is the floral half of that page. This is the 8x8. And this is 12 by 12. It comes in the 8 by 8 too. The pattern's just a little tighter. <clears throat> okay, I'm placing this. So 6 by 6, this one's the 5 by 5. 
on a five by five panel. I, I'm sorry. Six and a half by eight. Six and a half by eight. Five and a half by eight. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Man, I'm all over the place. Okay. Now there's our four and a half by eight. So now we're going to flip the other way and put down everything on the other side. So when we were together, we put this down. I couldn't locate this. Here it is. I found it. Just to give you a heads up. This is three and seven eighths inch wide. And th these happen to be scraps that I had. Uh, it's not deliberate. If you have a whole piece, even better. And this is just over two inches. That just happens to be the way it worked out. So now this turns out is going to fit my four and a half inch panel perfectly. Don't have to do anything with it. Don't have to trim it. <clears throat> don't have to worry about color blocking because there's no magnets. Okay, and we are going to color block. So I need to fill that gap. This is the pattern I chose. So we're just pulling it back in. It's right here. Oh, I did a good job measuring that. Uh, this is from the 12 by 12. And I didn't mention it, but all the polka dots are from the 12 by 12. So this page with all its flaps used one 12 by 12 in this pattern. Okay, now we're going to open that again, and then this is, we're back to this six and a half inch panel, I didn't want to lay down right, okay. So I am pulling these patterns together. So now you have to be wary of the magnet placement, so I'm going to go over how I did that. So I closed my six and a half down and just put a teeny tiny dot. And I knew that my magnet needed to be below that. And then I also knew I wanted this pattern to show so that you get this balance. So I knew that this strip had to be wide enough to come down and cover this. And in this case, it is two and a half inches wide. So I know I don't have anything bigger than that right now. I'm going to lay this here and then I'm going to fuss around with the greens and figure out how I'm going to lay those in. But this one is a no-brainer. I know I want this to appear uh, when I close the flap. And I also wanted enough clearance all the way around the magnet so the paper, paper doesn't want to buckle there. Okay, now I have this last little bit to use over here just for balance. i got to lay this flat. It's too much bulk. So I am going to place that here and it covers this magnet. The magnet's right about there. But you do need to be conscious of the size of your strips and your magnet location before you make a final decision on where these are going to be. And you can pull them up. It's not that big of a deal because it's all going to get covered with designer paper anyway. So this is the last of my dot paper. I'm going to place it over here. The last of my 12 by 12 dot paper. I still have some dotted paper in the smaller scale. I like this paper. It's pretty whimsical. I just like it independent of the rest of the collection. I'm not sure this pulls into the collection very well. This does for sure. But over here where it is by itself, I think it looks fine. When you try to put like an elegant flower next to it, I don't know. It's just not working for me. That's just my opinion. Okay, now we need to cover this. And I've got some scraps that I'm going to try to utilize, if I can. 
without trimming if it's possible. So these are the pieces I have. This is uh, eight by eight. There's another eight by eight. And I bet this, yeah, this came from the 12 by 12. So I'm gonna set this aside. The scale is a lot, a little bit differently and I'm gonna use these two panels to make it work. And I think I trimmed that, yeah. So this is gonna go here. And the question is, do I have this as one continuous eight by eight and then put an accent here, which this is what I chose? Or do I take my other eight by eight and cut it to fit across um, so that I don't have to use this? I don't know what I wanna do yet. It'd be ideal if I had that, but I don't. I don't. I don't have any more of that scale. I have it in a smaller scale and it just doesn't look right. Okay, so having said all that, these two are the last decision to be made. This can go down. I think. We'll have to open it back up and make sure I didn't miss a spot. When I do accordion flaps like this, sometimes I think I'm all done and I'm like, oh, there's a bare spot still. I missed opening one of them. <clears throat> Okay, that's in. Oh, and then of course this could be the other option is this between here and here. Okay, let's look at this for a second. Get that out of my field of vision. It's that or continuous green. I think I just I don't know. So just so you can see where the hinges lie. It's, so that would be a page. Kind of going back and forth. Let's try it this way. I think I want to use the whole piece. Partly is because that's what I did here. You know, I split one piece between these two and polka dots. And if I do this one, then basically it looks like I have a solid green and polka dots on either side, even though I'm repeating the pattern. So these are both coming from the eight by eight. That's the flip side. I'm trying to decide what I want it to look like. And I like that. It almost looks like a continuous pattern. It's not because that corner is this, or this corner is that corner. But I think this pulls together pretty nicely and almost looks like one continuous sheet. Just have to trim it. Okay, I might have to do this twice. I just need to get it down to a manageable size first. Of course, I mark it and then I can't see it immediately. That's why. Okay. How did we do? Wow, that's pretty good. Going in. So I think I've got one and a half, I'm pretty sure, one and a half and two and a half on these sides. Let's double check. Um, but I didn't trim it to fit. I just used the scraps I had. It's two and a half here. It's one and a half here. So those were scraps I had. And if you're building in the same order I did, which is in the order of the pages itself, um, you should have enough of everything to get here. Okay. So got my magnet back there. That's one side. Let's make sure we got everything covered. 
and that's the other side. And that's page eight. So there we go. So you can see this is the same as that, and I didn't care because it's really going to be like that when you open it. This is the 12 by 12, and I just love the roses. This is from the 8 by 8. Okay, so let's let's tie this closed. And then I can trim. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to turn it upside down because when I do, then the bow turns up oh, right side up. It's way too long. I even think the bow here is going to be very sweet. This is just a uh, three-eight inch satin ribbon, and I got it at you know one of the box, big box stores. I can't remember if it was Joanne's or Michael's, but oh my gosh, the last few times I've gone to anywhere, there's just nothing in those stores. And where's our art going? Our craft is disappearing on well, mainstream. Okay, that. I'm pretty happy with that. So we've got our magnet on this side. That's going to hold it from flopping around when you open page seven. And gravity is going to hold this down toward the spine. I'm happy with it. It gets very pretty. Okay, next time we get together, we're going to work on page eight. And that's going to be a little bit of a challenge because it's kind of bulky, but we'll make it happen. Okay, I'll see you guys soon.